our readings for this week, well, they seem to kind of just be a repeat of what we've been reading in First and Second Samuel and First and Second Kings at this point. Though it's not word for word, a lot of the themes, a lot of the stories are retold in a, a new light or a different phrasing here and there. But as we can see, the, the wording is different. But nevertheless, we're, we're here to focus on what God word, God's Word says to us amidst any section of the Bible that we read. So I'm looking at 2 Chronicles chapter 6. And in this we see Solomon blessing the people at the beginning of it, and then Solomon's prayer of dedication. And in this prayer he begins by looking at the, the magnitude and the awesomeness of God. He says, O Lord God of Israel, there's no God like you in heaven or on earth, keeping covenant and showing steadfast love to your, to your servants, who walk before you with all your, their heart. Right there, Solomon is looking and seeing how God is just awesome in all of his wonder and all of his steadfast love. Then, as we read through, as we read through this section, we see something that kind of sticks out as a refrain. It seems like every petition that Solomon brings before God that he's announcing and speaking before the people as they're, they're presenting their requests to God. He, he, says, he says, basically, hear from heaven. He recognizes that the, he, he, he almost thinks that there's some distance between God, that nothing in earth could contain the magnitude of God and who he is. And so he, he presents a request, even... If it's about a man who sins against his neighbor, as, as it is in verse 22. Or if your people, if his people are defeated, or if they're experiencing plague or famine, or if they're overrun, or if they've turned against him. He, Solomon implores God to say, hear from heaven, O God, and forgive us. Hear from heaven, he says. And he's recognizing, as I said, recognizing the magnitude of God and who he is and what he can do in all of his wondrous power. Well, you see, that's the thing. He recognizes that God is so great that, and really he thinks that God is so great, he, there's no possible way for him to dwell on earth. And when we see God's fulfillment of these prayers is, Hear from heaven, O God. And God hears from heaven and does not just stay there. He decides to come down into our flesh and into our history. He hears from heaven and he comes to forgive. He dwells within our human flesh as he, as he comes into our flesh just in the form of a baby and then grows to be the man, Jesus. He hears from heaven and he comes to us to deliver, to deliver you from all sin, from death, and from the power of devil. And does this make any sense? No, it doesn't make any sense how he hears from heaven, but the, the wisdom of God is wiser than men, or the foolishness of God is wiser than men, and the weakness of God is stronger than men, as it's written in 1 Corinthians chapter 1. God's wisdom, we see, brought into Christ to save all of us, where he hears from heaven our prayers and comes to meet them and fulfill them and answer them in Christ. Would you please pray with me? Heavenly Father, we thank you that you have sent Christ into the world to save us. That you've heard our prayers and turned and saved us from our sin, from death, and from the power of the devil. Grant us strength to live in this, this joyous grace that you've given us. In your name we pray. Amen. God's blessings on the rest of your week.